Expressions such as, crikey, and she's a beauty, typified Steve Irwin's incredibly energetic and enthusiastic camera and on-screen presence in his television program, Crocodile Hunter. What he's doing is he's saying, the series first aired in Australia in 1992, and a little while later it was picked up by the Discovery Network, which catapulted him to international celebrity status. Owen originally started out as a professional crocodile hunter and worked at his family's farm and wildlife park. Like Steve himself, the park also went on to become an international hit. Before Steve found fame, he found the love of his life in the form of Terry, who was an American tourist visiting the wildlife park. They were a couple that worked well together, and both of their careers blossomed on to unimaginable heights. A demonstration of the regard that the world had for Irwin's park could be found in 2002, when three very rare Sumatran tiger cubs were handed over to Australia Zoo to help ensure the survival of the Sumatran tiger species. There are only about 400 Sumatran tigers left in the world. Irwin's popularity in America was such that the Australian Prime Minister, John Howard, hand-picked Irwin to attend a gala barbecue to honor U.S. President George W. Bush when he visited in 2003. Sadly, Steve Irwin, the ebullient Australian television personality, conservationist and self-declared wildlife warrior, was killed by a stingray barb to the heart during a diving expedition. Irwin was in the water at Bat Reef off the remote coast of northeastern Queensland, shooting a segment for a series called Ocean's Deadliest. He swam too close to one of the animals, which have a poisonous barb on their tails. Crew members aboard the boat Croc 1 called emergency services in the nearest city, Cairns, and administered CPR as they rushed the boat to nearby Low Island to meet a rescue helicopter. Later, his body could be seen arriving at Cairns Base Hospital, escorted by a police car. At Australia Zoo, flowers were dropped at the entrance, drivers sounding their horns in respect as they passed. Irwin is survived by his wife Terry from Oregon, whom he married in 1992, their eight-year-old daughter Bindi Sue, and son Bob, who was just three in December 2006. Within weeks of her father's death, Bindi was already back at work in her new role as a wildlife warrior. And look at his big, long fur. He's got really... She even took the stage as host of the Nickelodeon's Kids' Choice Awards, an engagement that her dad Steve was supposed to have fulfilled. Her manager, John Stainton, a longtime friend of the family, defended Bindi's workload in the wake of her loss pointing out that she has spent much of her life in front of the cameras and is not overly stressed about appearing in the media. Bindi's latest venture is hosting her own wildlife show, Bindi the Jungle Girl, for the Discovery Channel. With the Bindi juggernaut set to launch her into global superstardom, some critics are questioning her workload so soon after her dad's death. But for most of the fans of The Crocodile Hunter, they are just happy to watch their idol's daughter keep her father's dreams and passions alive. Steve Irwin's impact on the public was extraordinary. Hundreds of mourners turned out to pay tribute to him at his wildlife park on the day after the accident. Some were too distressed to speak, and fans of all ages laid flowers and other mementos outside the entrance of Australia Zoo, north of Brisbane. People also left messages of condolences on a khaki ranger shirt of the type made famous by the crocodile hunter. The final tribute to Steve Irwin was from the Queensland State Premier, Peter Beatty, who described him as possibly the best known Australian in the world. Fascinate people about them, try to get tigers into people's hearts so as we can save them from the inevitable, which is extinction.